Hey everyone, Chris here. It is March 21st, 2020, and uh, it's been a rough week for the market. So I talk about my own personal finances without getting too too detailed, uh, but it's been a rough, depressing week, um, and I'm not even counting on the money in my accounts, right? It's just depressing to think about uh, such steep drops. So there's been some steep drops, um, and I have made it a habit not this week to really not pay too much attention to it. I have watched daily what the, the indices are doing as they close. And it's been down, 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 pretty historic. But uh, I wanted to put out there and actually ha focus this video on uh, how important it can be to set up a Roth IRA for your child, right? And what's interesting about times like these and, you know, all, all of the good advice says, you don't time the market, right? So you're not trying to pick a time when to get in or get out. And that's generally true. And I think people say that mostly to try to keep you in the market and not panicking about staying in the market, right? When when stocks and uh, the value of thing is, things are falling. But it's funny how your mind can play tricks on you because it's also when the stocks are down, it's a great time to get in. And that is timing the market. That's the, That's timing the market, right? Whether you're trying to get in or trying to get out, you're timing it, right? So, but I did, you know, it's it's um, it's pretty clear that now might be a, an okay time to get into the market. And so, if you take a step back and say, you know, it's always a good time to start thinking about helping your child plan for their future, uh, develop some skills and behaviors that are gonna th th really serve them well as they get older, uh, setting up a Roth IRA account is one, one thing that you can do it will definitely help your children down the road and possibly, you know, it will outlive you, right? Hopefully it will. Um, that's the idea is that your children will outlive you and that they will, they will find themselves in their own retirement period at some point. And that's specifically what an IRA is intended to, to do is to provide support to people in their retirement years. And a Roth IRA is a tax free, right? So it's what you lose with a Roth IRA is you, you don't get the tax deductions today but I'm not sure that that's the most important thing uh, for somebody who's a 16-year-old kid getting their first paycheck, right? So I'm going to walk you through some of your options related to setting up a Roth IRA. Uh, we'll walk through some uh, calculations that can show you why it's so important to do it as quickly and early as you can for a couple of reasons, right? There is just the reality of compound growth um, and the benefit of that. And the, the earlier you start, the longer your money has to compound. And then there's also the behaviors, right, and the skills that your kid will learn as you're doing this. Um, so we'll talk about both of those things. Okay, we're talking we're talking about investing for our kids' retirement. And there's a, a variety of ways to do that. Uh, the Roth IRA is one way to do that, and there's some some real practical benefits to a Roth IRA. The primary one being that it's completely tax free when you hit retirement age uh, when you're eligible to make with uh, withdrawal distributions out of it you do so tax free which is huge um, so so that's that's a benefit from it otherwise uh, investing in a Roth first off you know Roth is just a, it's a container so a, a Roth uh, individual retirement about retirement account is simply a bucket that you can put other in you can put investments into right so you can put stock stock purchases bonds uh, uh, um, ETFs, mutual funds, you name it. You can put a variety of different investment um, securities into uh, an IRA. An IRA itself is nothing but an empty bucket. It doesn't have any value generally. If you're starting a, an IRA, <clears throat> all of your money goes into a super low interest yielding money market account, right? And so once your money's in there, you have some investment decisions to make, and that's where you can begin to purchase. But before we uh, before we talk about how to set one up and where you can do that, let's just talk about the basics of what we're trying to do, right? And so let's say your kid 16 gets their first job and we can run through the, the scenario that I find myself in that my kid made $2,600 in taxable income in her first, her first year, right? So that's, she's gonna start, um, she's gonna start with that. Um, and then for five years, let's say, yeah, for five more years, 
um, we're going to contribute, we're going to max out her IRA and add uh, 6,000 a year, which is the maximum that you can do for six years. We're going to say she's going to get a 6% rate of return because that's fairly conservative. Okay, so we start with 26 for five more years, we're going to max it out. And after that, we get $3,700, $37,000. We get this amount of money. Now, even if that's all we got, and so five years out, she would be, we'll say, look, she's looking at about, in five years, she'll be 21. And so that would make her retirement about 40 years out, roughly. Now, she would easily qualify to withdraw from her, um, from her IRA at that point. And let's say if we just, she, she's invested for the next five years, and then after that doesn't do a thing, um, what does that mean for her? Well, that means that age 61 should have a nice little nest egg of $383,000. And that's if she doesn't do anything beyond her, her 21st birthday when she makes her final distribution into her Roth IRA. But let's say that the behavior stick, she's able to invest 100 bucks a month. Well, let's actually make it a month rather than 1200 a year. And let's say she's going to do that for 40 years. Um, what is what does that end up looking like? Oh, so there we get. You can see that we get uh, a half, a, a little over half a million, 570,000, most of which is is interest, right? So you can see the compounding nature. And let's say your kid is actually uh, a superstar, right? And is putting away a thousand dollars a month, um, you know, which would be twelve thousand a year. Let's see what that does. But yeah, twelve thousand a month, or a thousand a month for forty years. It might be a stretch, but you you get the idea, right? That the interest that you're gaining over time is the real. It's the it's the secret sauce in this equation. And so this is the reason that we're doing it. One is to uh, set your kid up so that they have uh, they're fairly secure and independent in their retirement years, and also that they begin to develop the habits um, that are going to serve them well as they. Uh, navigate their adult life. Now we talk about setting up a Roth IRA for your kid. There's a, a few different vendors that you can use to do it. There's Vanguard, Fidelity, and Schwab. I have you I have used Fidelity, so I'm a I mean I'm sorry, Vanguard. I'm a Vanguard customer. I have a custodial account for my kid uh, using Vanguard. I will say that this article that we're looking at at the finance buff um, it is, uh, you can't open an account for your kid online. You do have to call them at their 1-800 number. You're going to get a form shipped to you. You fill it out, send it back in, and, uh, and then you're going to go from there. If it looks like Fidelity actually has that uh, capability on to create an account online, a custodial Roth IRA online. Um, and then it sounds like Char Charles Schwab does as well. Uh, but you do have to fill out a paper fee or call or a paper form or call them. So it's similar to Vanguard. Once I can say once you're in Vanguard, it's not difficult at all to set up um, and you're able to, 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 to treat it just like you are any of your own accounts. And so you can connect to your uh, your local savings accounts, whether whoever your, your your bank is, you can connect to that account and easily do electronic transfers of funds in. Uh, and it's it's almost uh, too easy, right? And back back to the point, you you know what you don't want to do is get in the habit of um, trying to play these market timing games with your kids, with your kids' uh, retirement accounts. And that's about it, right? Setting up a setting up a an IRA or a Roth IRA, it's pretty easy to do. Setting up a Custodial accounts for your kids are a little less easier to do, but it's not difficult. Um, if you're from a planning point of view, you could safely plan on it taking about a month because uh, you do have to send mail. Uh, you're going to receive mail. You may have to send mail. Um, some vendors will may off, also offer the ability to fax it in or scan it in email, but there is a back and forth that um, in some cases, at least with Vanguard, there's paper involved and a wet signature. Um, sounds like Fidelity may have a more streamlined online process. Uh, so prepare yourself for a little bit of a little bit of uh, a paperwork shuffle processing. But otherwise, uh, it, it's pretty simple, and I can't stress enough how important it can be as a tool, as a practical tool for your kid's retirement, but also as a way to introduce your kid to how saving works, why we save. Uh, 
you know, it, it, when they're at a young age, they're getting a job, they're, they're beginning to make money. And when I was a kid, I was spending the money as quickly as I could make it. So I didn't, I wasn't uh, inclined to, to, to do a lot of saving. Um, and with my own kid, I, I've, I've had discussions with this about her. She's not particularly interested or excited, which is fine. And I've, I've kind of gone, turned around from my own way of thinking. It is not so important that she be excited or, uh, you know, fascinated by finance and compound interest. What's what is most important is that she develop just some behaviors, which I think become they're just habits. And in some ways, you know, if Dad says to do a thing, I, I'm lucky that my kid often will just do what I say. And so in this case, she's become a, a pretty good saver, even though she's not excited about. Um, saving or finance or compound growth and what's interesting when I first started talking with her about what what did she what what kind of plans might she have I I asked her but her friends both they were sitting side by side and I said do you want to be rich when you grow up and they both instantly really without even blinking an eye said no I said oh oh well, that's okay I wasn't prepared for that answer and it didn't it actually made me happy a little bit I said well do you want to be wealthy and they looked at me and I don't think that they quite understood what the difference between wealth and being wealthy and being rich is, and I'm not sure I understand either. Um, and so I, I came at it a different way. Uh, what I learned is that my kid is interested in doing things that cost money, but not necessarily interested in the money itself. So if I said, well, let's say, you know, uh, when you turn 18 or when you turn 20, what, what, what do you think? Uh, how would you like a, 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 to take a trip to New York City for a week and see some Broadway shows because she really likes theater um, and plays? And her eyes instantly lit up. And I said, so, you know, the idea of saving isn't just a retirement type of activity. It is, it is an activity that is going to allow you to achieve a lot of goals in your life. So what's important is that you start to, start to have some goals, things that you'd like to get done, and then plan yourself in such a way that you're going to achieve those goals. And a lot of times they're going to be financial goals that you have to hit in order to get a thing done. And so I think once we had that conversation about, it's not about retirement. Retirement's one thing that you're going to hopefully have to worry about someday, but it also applies to anything else that you're going to want to do in your life, whether it's your education, your house, your car, things that you want to get done. Uh, if you want to avoid the debt trap, which are, you know, have separate sets of videos and the internet's full of uh, information about how to stay out of debt and why you should stay out of debt, but learning the importance of saving today and doing things as a parent that helps build those skill sets is critical because some of it isn't that they like doing it. Some of it is just habits that they're going to form and um, and sometimes those habits are going to stick. So if your kid gets into a habit of saving 10 bucks a week or 20 bucks a week or 100 bucks a week or whatever it is, that habit is likely going to stick with them, right? And it won't take long into their adult lives before they begin to see how valuable that has become for them. And now they do have instantly an emergency fund that they didn't even know they would need, but now they need it. And they built it up because they were able to save. So, uh, you know, it's never a bad time to plan ever, right? Um, and so we find ourselves in the midst of a stock market uh, free fall, essentially, uh, that introduces a buying opportunity if you're trying to time the market. But regardless of the timing of the market, it's never a bad time, once again, to plan for your kids, uh, help them learn. This is a great opportunity to learn, to, to teach them about loss as well. So I can talk to my kid about my own circumstances and the, the amounts of money that I've lost over the last uh, two to three weeks, along with everybody else in the market. So I'm not alone. Um, and it's good for her to, to see that this happens, right? And this is the risk. This is the, the downside, the volatility. Uh, that will also one day offer an upside volatility that uh, we'll see her realize some gains. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope uh, it was useful. We'll see you next time.